Hello there friends and followers and welcome to this Xplain 11.3 beta 4 video. We are going to be taking a look at response curves in this video and for all intended purposes we are going to be taking a look at how to apply a response curve to the rudder control. In our specific example today the response curve is going to allow us fine control over how much rudder is applied in the sim relative to how much force we apply on the actual hardware. Let us now take a look at the settings. We're going to click on settings and we're going to go to the joystick tab and we're going to select the um, Redbird Alloy RD1 which is my rudder control with toe brake. Um, as you can see I have left, right and yaw. And now the yaw axis is the rudder axis and it's going to be the subject of our video but whatever applies here applies to everything that has a response curve and if you can see here uh, for joystick for example I can add a response curve to roll and pitch as well as on the throttle um, again you can add it to the elevator trim and the throttle engines 1 and 2 okay so let's go back to our example here Redbird Alloy RD1 and we're going to say add response curve now what you see here on the screen is the preference uh, of how the force is going to, to be applied in the sim relative to the actual hardware device. So if I click on the left, uh, sorry, the right rudder, you can see now the values are increasing. The horizontal movement will denote how much rudder is being applied and the vertical movement will denote how much rudder control is being applied in the sim. So at full rudder control here, full, full right rudder, as you can see we have now one and one, denoting 100% both for the rudder actual hardware and the rudder um, force being applied in the sim. So Laminar Research has allowed us to change this and what you can do is you can move this down here. Now what this means, all of this here, so if I press, as you can see now, you can see the movement. So I'm pressing on my rudder, our uh, right rudder now and up to this point there will be absolutely no rudder in the sim there will be no rudder force applied in the sim now this minute here at this minute it will start it will keep growing and then it will shoot up so if I click there I'm gonna get the hundred percent you can by the way reduce this further so maybe you don't want full um, rudder to be applied um, in the sim for a specific aircraft and you have the ability to do that here with um, with the response curve. Now there is this um, this particular um, interpretation mode and there is a linear mode okay so if we actually say cancel and add we'll just say there we go linear or cubic okay so this will allow even finer control over what you want to do here so we can go here and there we go there we go. As you can see here, you can do all kinds of different things with the response curve. So how does this actually work in the sim? So let's go ahead and take a look. So first, I'm going to say cancel. I'm going to sh make sure that this is, this is by default, this is what I get. This is the response curve that I have. So this is right rudder and this is left rudder. Okay. All right. Let's go to the sim, start the aircraft and let's taxi down the runway and use the rudder. We'll go back then to the settings, change the response curve and see what effect it has on the aircraft. We are in the default Cessna 172. I'm going to release the parking brake. All right. So now I have, I'm pressing on the left rudder, right rudder, and I'm applying full left and right rudder. Okay. I actually give it full throttle here just for a minute okay and as you can see here with slight rudder control the aircraft starts moving okay let me go ahead and set the brakes here all right let's go ahead and add response curves now all right parking brake is set not sure why it jumps like that. It's probably XP realistic. All right, let's go ahead and add a response curve now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to 
reduce this. So now I've increased my null zone. So all of this is a null zone now. And I'm going to bring this down all the way right here. You know what? Let me just bring this up a little bit. There we go. So that's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to say apply. Done. All right. Release the parking brake. All right. Now I'm actually pressing all the way on the left um, uh, rudder. And as you can see, there is very little movement now. Uh, with the full rudder being applied, okay? So you can say goodbye to all those really wobbly landings uh, because now the controls, the touchy controls, if you've ever had that problem, are gone forever, okay? Now on this particular Cessna, this is probably not very, uh, not a very good example, but if you have an aircraft uh, such as the TBM, so I've tried the um, TBM 900 by Hot Start, and that aircraft, the, the controls with that aircraft are really touchy. So I've made some adjustments to the, uh, to the tow brake uh, as well as the rudder control and now I can have perfect landings and the aircraft just really stays on the center line. So let's try another example here. We're going to go to the settings again and we're going to say edit the response curve and what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this. Okay, so immediately we're going to have um, apply and say done. All right, release the parking brake. And now, watch what happens. Look at that. <laughs> All right, so here we go. So I'm going to give it just a little bit of rudder. See, I cannot even control the aircraft because I've made it so that the response is immediate and with very little um, uh, application on the actual rudder control. So it's, it becomes um, really um, difficult to control. All right, let us now try something a little uh, more realistic. Uh, let's go to settings and edit response curve. And I'm going to leave it at about right here. Yep, there we go. Apply. All right, let's go ahead and take off and then we'll come back and land. And let's see uh, what happens to the aircraft in terms of the... Uh, rudder control. So our aim is to keep the aircraft uh, on the center line. Let's do full throttle. And as you can see, we can keep, I'm applying a little bit of left rudder, just a little bit, uh, to keep the aircraft on the center line. And as you can see, the aircraft is on the center line. We're way beyond our rotation speed, but I just really want to show you guys how easy it is now to keep the aircraft on the center line. There we go. All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to head back to the airport and land to see what happens as soon as we touch down with the response curve applied. All right, here we go. We are about to land. We're just a notch uh, faster than we should, but that's okay. Just go ahead and reduce our speed. absolutely beautiful just the way the aircraft handles is so much better and of course it's trial and error so you might need to tweak the controls uh, I think it needs just a little bit more tweaking uh, but overall I'm very pleased with what Laminar has done with the response curves this is probably by far the best feature in this version of X-Plane uh, the response curves uh, really um, solve the problem of the touchy controls uh, go ahead and try this on the TBM 900 if you are having issues, uh, especially uh, during landing, uh, and you will see major difference in the way the aircraft handles. Let's go ahead and make the turn here. Really, really nice. Uh, I really like this feature. Uh, by far the very best uh, in, in the X-Plane uh, 11.3 version. 
this is what I wanted to share with you guys response curves happy flying and happy response curving uh, until next time please take care of yourselves and each other and I will see you all very soon bye bye for now